Doth mine eyes deceive? Is Spike treated with actual dignity in this episode? Yes. Yes, he is. And that fact, and thusly inspiration manifestation itself, is friggin' amazing. This is Spike at his best. A competent, loyal character who has his friend's best intentions at heart. His childish naivete is getting him into trouble here, but not at the expense of his own integrity. Spike does make a mistake in this episode, but he makes it for the right reason, and with the best of intentions, not just because a joke needed a target. This is the Spike we saw in episodes like Lesson Zero, that was just so compelling and endearing and was oozing with potential. And it was such a treat to have him back here, even if it was probably just for a single episode. And I think in order to really give Spike his due, we need to jump right into the moral of this episode. I want to start off by pointing out how much I loved the fact that we dodged the Twilight Bullet here. As soon as she showed up, I was afraid that Spike was going to run to her for help and that she was going to undo his mistake. But that would have been so disappointing, because the entire episode is a person versus self conflict. Spike caused the problem, yes, but he's known the solution the entire episode. It's not about him versus Ray or him versus the power of the spell book, it's Spike wrestling with his own conscience. Because not only does he not want to hurt Rarity's feelings, he also knows that if she gets mad at him, his relationship with her could be ruined. So the real reason for his silence is because he doesn't want to lose her. It's actually a selfish ambition. So if Twilight had come in and forced his hand, it would have come off as a bit cheap. But luckily that doesn't happen and Spike makes a stand all by himself. In terms of the message overall, while the beginning of the episode touched a bit on creativity and overworking yourself, the bulk of the episode and the central theme is being a true friend, and considering short-term versus long-term actions to try and help your friends when they can't seem to help themselves. Spike starts off by trying to support Rarity by constantly giving her positive reinforcement, regardless of objective circumstance, as most friends would. Even in the beginning of the episode, when he comments on the puppet stage being amazing, the pony who commissioned it from Rarity brought up some valid points, with her focusing so much on the way it looked, utility was ignored and it couldn't function as the prop it was supposed to be. So even then, Spike was kind of telling a half-truth to comfort Rarity. However, as she succumbs further and further to the spell, his positive reinforcement, which he is laying down because he doesn't want to hurt her feelings, begins to do far more harm than good, giving her the confidence to continue down a destructive path. And while Spike knows this, he at first tries to lay on complimentary suggestions, trying to subtly nudge Rarity down the correct path without having to bluntly call her on her errors and save her the embarrassment and him the awkward situation. He then tries to just take the book away without her realizing, again, to solve the problem without confronting her. This in particular was a great part of Spike's actions in this episode because it's so relatable. That awkward middle ground when you know your friend is doing something wrong and you want to call them on it, but you just don't have the heart to do it outright so you try to take the path of least resistance. Eventually though, Spike realizes that if he really wants to help Rarity, she needs to know the truth, and he's the only one in a position to do that for her. And in the end, the truth is exactly what Rarity needs needed to hear. I think this is a great message. And while if you had presented it to me on paper, I'd have thought it'd been better suited for Applejack, the fact that Rarity and Spike have such a strong bond, and for Spike his loyalty to Rarity exceeds friendship, he has this fantastic motivation to embody this moral, and allows for an angle that AJ really isn't able to replicate. Speaking of Rarity, I think I might have identified a bit too much with her this episode. I could just imagine my friend Charlie and my girlfriend's ironic giggles as they watched her essentially replicate my biggest character flaws on screen. They both know I'm a workaholic, and I beat myself up for constantly not being productive enough, deny myself downtime, and things like food in the name of productivity, and take negative critique entirely too harshly. Whether I drown my sorrows in tubs of ice cream, though, is up for debate. Rarity's entire mindset and subsequent addiction to the inspiration spell could be perceived as a comment on the artistic mindset. How many times has a creative mind desired to be able to just take out the middle action and go directly from inspiration to completion? I know I've daydreamed about this possibility more times than I can really count. And while this episode never comes forth and presents this angle as a concrete theme by outright addressing it, given the fact that the first third of this episode contains recurring motifs, as well as a desire for a spell like this in creative minds in the real world, or really anything that would allow for more productivity or more time to create, as well as the fact that the show staff has sprinkled concepts into episodes like this in the past, <coughs> suited for success, <coughs> I couldn't help but take away a bit of keeping your creative expectations in check and trying not to become a slave to your muse being here in the beginning. The best thing about this episode though is that the entirety of its events are completely believable and backed up by years of character progression in previous plot points. We have a believable catalyst action in Rarity putting aesthetics over utility in the puppeteer stage, which drives 
requires her to have a mental breakdown when it's rejected, leading to Spike to go to the Everfree Castle, which we've established before as having mystical qualities, and stumbling upon a book of questionable origin to solve the problem. And then, Rarity's abuse of the magic is completely understandable, given not only her desire to appease other ponies as established in this episode, but also her love of aesthetics and higher class taste being something that's been established since the beginning of the series. She suddenly has the ability to create anything she desires with a thought, and of course, would leverage this to her advantage, all the while the dark magic continues to corrupt her mind. And then we also have Spike, who despite being able to clearly see Rarity's breakdown, is hesitant to take action because he doesn't want to hurt her feelings or risk their relationship. And while their bond is presented well enough in the episode in isolation, the fact that we have four seasons of unrequited affection from Spike justifies his hesitance even further. Just nothing about this narrative's proceedings is contrived or stilted for the sake of convenience. Except for one thing. Why is Rarity, of all ponies, someone so obsessed with being in the spotlight, determined to keep her new abilities of creation, and actions thereof, a secret. I can understand wanting to hide the fact that you have a magical artifact that gives you superpowers, but Rarity's entire motivation is doing great work. She wanted to put her very best on display for the fair, not to mention that's how she presents all of her work throughout the series. To put it bluntly, Rarity loves to brag. One could make the argument that it's because she knows that what she's doing is wrong, but it seemed to me that the spellbook was blinding her to her own folly. In her mind, she really was making a positive difference. To posit otherwise would kind of undermine the entire message of the episode. The only other reason she seems to do that is because if ponies knew what she was up to, they would put a stop to her before Spike gets a chance to build up the courage to call her out himself. Something that would, once again, undermine the central theme. It's also a bit disappointing that Rarity doesn't remember her tenure under the spell. Having to come to terms with losing the ability of instantly creating anything she wanted, as well as dealing with the fallout of her actions, would have been a really interesting bit of characterization, but the episode didn't seem to have time for that. My only other minor nitpicks would be that Spike somehow got through the entirety of the Everfree Forest alone, though to be fair, the forest seems to have been downplayed this entire season, and that they brought back the whole Owlicious Who joke again. It's kind of tired at this point, not to mention that it makes no sense, considering Spike seems to be able to understand him the other 95% of the time. Some other observations. Unicorn puppeteering is genius. We can check distressed ice cream indulgence off the list of adorable rarity drama cliches. My marvelous, marvelous book! Your marvelous book, eh? Would you say it's your precious? So did the mariachi band get turned into Octavia and her bandmates, or did they just, like, switch places somehow? I'm so excited! I'm so excited! I'm so scared best delivery of the episode. So if Spike ate the book, is it destroyed? Or did Twilight have to, um, retrieve it? Overall, Inspiration Manifestation is a fantastic episode, with great story that rarely falters and builds upon established characteristics of its main players and presents a resonant moral. Not only is it far and away Spike's best appearance in Season 4, but it's pretty easily one of his best appearances, period, and by extension, one of the best of Season 4. Now I have a question for you. If you could have a spellbook that could modify or enhance one of your skills, what would it be, and how would it work? Let me know in the comments below. Until next time, I'm Tommy Oliver. Stay curious. Sometimes I think my head is filled with clouds. Kicking up a storm when I feel it down. I can't put it in words like you can. Though it don't matter cause you understand. Sometimes I think that I am overwhelmed. By the vastness of my realm. Reaching up the sun splits in five